For our last bit, let's talk about function notation. Let's look at what it is and how to use it. So earlier we talked about a function being something like using your phone to convert 25 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit, where really what your phone did is it went in and it did this, used this equation, this calculation to spit out an answer. Uh, so this is an equation because the degrees Fahrenheit equals uh, 9 fifths the number of degrees Celsius you have plus 32. A function may not, on, on the surface, may not look really any different than uh, an equation like this. It's just set up a little bit differently. So if I write the same thing in function notation, I would write f of c equals 9 fifths c plus 32. Now, what does that mean? Well, c is my independent variable, f is my dependent variable. Uh, this is the name of my function. That is my independent variable. And I would read this as f of c. So my function of C. So let's actually use this. Scroll up here. So if I wanted to use this function to find out how much uh, 25 degrees Celsius is in Fahrenheit, I would write it out as F of now instead of the C I want to know 25 degrees so instead of C I put my 25 degrees and over here on this other side instead of that C whatever was in the brackets here is going to end up wherever I see a C on the right Okay, then common mistake or common misunderstanding. I know in algebra you've always written that as that would say, well, that is f times 25. When we're talking about function notation, that's a little bit different. We're saying f of 25. All the actual math work is going to happen on this side right here. If I go through that equation, 9 times 25 divided by 5 and then add 32 to the end answer, what I end up with is f of 25 degrees equals 77 degrees. So that's essentially saying if I put 25 degrees into my function, it spits out 77 degrees. Keeping in mind that this is a Fahrenheit answer, this was a Celsius. Okay. What's in the brackets is the piece you're putting into the function. What's on the right hand side of the equal sign is the answer that comes out. Let's use function notation to answer a question. So here we've got a question that talks about the amount of gas remaining in the vehicle's tank after having driven a certain number of kilometers. It gives us an equation to describe that relationship. The first part of the question is, A, describe the function, write the equation in function notation. So when I write out the equation, and let's put it right here, we have V equals negative 0.08B plus 50. So if I were to look at what that means, it says the volume of gas in the tank equals uh, the distance driven times negative 0 0.08 and then plus 50. To put it in more plainer English, every time you drive a kilometer, you use up 0 0.08 of a liter of fuel. And this plus 50 talks about you start with 50 liters of fuel. 
So let's just label those variables just so we've got it. Now your volume depends upon your distance. V is volume of fuel, and that's in liters. D is the distance driven. Distance driven, and that's in kilometers. So that's what the equation is. Let's rewrite it in function notation, which really isn't all that complicated. So uh, I need to call it something, that, and we're gonna, usually you end up using the uh, dependent variable. So I'm going to say V of D equals negative 0.08D plus 50. So this is an equation. This is function notation. Really doesn't look much different. It's different on how you describe it. It's not really an equation because this right in here is not V times D. We're saying it's V of D. So the volume with respect to the distance driven equals negative 0.08D plus 50. That's it. Let's move on to part B. It wants to know what is V of 600? So essentially what it's asking, if, it has, if the car has driven 600 kilometers, what volume of gas is left in that tank? So I'm gonna write it out using, oh, wrong color. I'm gonna use this function notation right here. So let's start V. Now instead of the D, I'm gonna put 600 kilometers into that spot. Equals, now I'm gonna start writing everything out except anywhere where there's a D, I'm gonna do the same thing as I did in the left. I'm gonna replace that D with 600 kilometers. 50. All right, on the right hand side, let's use Bedmus. Let's figure out what the, those, put those numbers together. Uh, negative 0 0.08 times 600 should give me negative 48. Then I've got plus 50 because I was in there before. Negative 48 plus 50 gives me 2. So what it's saying, V of 600 kilometers, if I have traveled 600 kilometers according to this function, I should have two liters of gas left. That's what it's figuring out. Move on to C. C is a little different than B. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. We're looking at V of D equals 26. Over here, I put a independent variable or a number into the function that I put an input in and my function gave me an output an end answer so I put something in I got an end answer this time uh, let's put a unit on there because it makes more sense it gives me the answer and wants to know what do I put into it in order to get that answer same basic process we're just going to end up working backwards so let's Let's write it out. I'm going to use this basic uh, equation right here, except this time I know my answer is 26 liters. Equals uh, negative 0 0.08. This time I don't know what D is, so I'm going to leave it in there as variable plus 50. Now, Let's solve for D. Subtract 50, subtract 50, 26 minus 50 gives me negative 24 equals negative 0.08D. Divide both sides by 0 0.08, or negative 0.08. 
I end up with uh, 300 equals D. Now if I rewrite it again, it means if we drive 300 kilometers, we should have 26 liters back left. And that's how you work backwards through some function notation.